Mm -hmm. we're, we're on. What's going on, brother? Already? Oh, oh man. Yeah, sure. already. Jesus. Should I put time is flying. pants back on or um yeah, I would <laughs> I would suggest we do that actually. <laughs> just in case. Um you know. We're gonna have um image that I'm probably not gonna work on for everyone who's watching, but I'm pretty sure there's quite a few people who's gonna be listening to it yeah. as well. But just uh just so it's there. So just we can just so it's there, you know guys? Just so it's there. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I have this wonderful person with me today, Mr. Justin Fields, that I oh, met a couple of years ago. I, no, when did we met for the first time? Um, we, we met in person a couple of times before. Uh, yeah. And then we got super busy. Uh, was it like 2011 or something? 2010? Something crazy like that? I think, I think Last of Us was just about to come out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then it was more of a... Okay, that makes sense. That was like 2013 or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I remember it was... Because it, uh, Dan Levisi was with me. That's when we first met. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, my memory we were, is... we were We were beta testing. We got to play it early. It was super oh, you awesome. Did? Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> did you did you guys go to like dude i can't even remember shit that's the problem <laughs> because yeah like, i remember like i think we got the i think um aaron lamonic sent me an email mm -hmm. and uh you know i'm not i don't know if I'm, i should be talking about this but i don't think we're breaking any ndas the game's been out for years now um oh you're talking about this game that's been out for like five years now yeah i don't think we are. <laughs> <laughs> like it's yesterday <laughs> you know uh but no um well, you never know. You never know what thing you sign away when you sign those things. So you just you got to be careful. But um, no, I remember he he messaged me and uh, you know he was just like, "Hey, are you psyched about you know Last of Us coming out?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can't wait to play it." And he was just like, "Well, how would you like to come in like tomorrow and play it?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. You know that that sounds awesome." Um, and he he invited Dan as well, and we were both at that time. I think I was at section nine with Dan. Mm. And uh, we just like we took a day off and went over there and and played uh, played Last of Us and it was uh, it was really fun. I think we we lost like six hours because like all of a sudden we were just in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then they were like, "Okay, guys, it's it's time to end it." And then I think we went out with you guys afterwards. Oh yeah, I remember now. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I remember that yeah, part when we Monica. actually went out, but I didn't know you were. Or maybe I knew. I just, you know, my memory is like a Swiss cheese almost at this point, you know. <laughs> it's just like just getting uh, obliterated over time. You know, having a kid also just makes me not memorize pretty much anything at all at this point. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's to... true. And and you were uh, you were you were working out pretty heavily as well as uh, doing a lot of martial arts stuff for a while, weren't you? Yeah, I were. And then I stopped because <laughs> I got a kid. <laughs> and then I'm not this kind of, you know, I, I wish I was this person that can just keep up with everything. And I'm just just not, you know, I just recently uh, sort of started to look at, look at, around my health uh, a little, little more again. Yeah. Um, I did jujitsu for the first year uh, when I had a kid. But it was just like, it was like over time, it was less and less and less. Because one thing you realize is like, for me, it was specifically was, you know, I could do that. Uh, it's, it's a good health thing and it's fun. I love it. But it's not, it's not like my, my number one or even number two priority. And yeah. then once you have a kid, like you really have to cut down on the things you're doing and really have to prioritize your time because you just like literally run out of time. And like, how yeah. are you going to say no to like a little one that just runs, runs in? They, they don't understand you're working. Like they don't have yeah. the concept in their heads. Like, oh, Dada, Dada is here. So, you know, you have to really, really be mindful of it, you know? Oh, so yeah. I started cutting on things and, you know, and eventually like, you know, I had this really long hiatus as well from like social media and all that kind of stuff, even from the podcast. So it's all worth it because like, you know, Hey, you kind of want to spend a little bit of time with family, you know, enjoy, enjoy uh, as things grow and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I used to work out a lot. Now it's like, you know, I, I, I went back running. I run a lot now. I try to run like a couple of times a week. Um, try to do like a really short uh, routines just to stay healthy, you know. 
I think the yeah. be- the best indicator is like when you're when your back starts to hurt, you should start doing something. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's been. What was it? The I think it was just like just the other day I was out walking the dogs and I had to bend over, and I I did it in a way where I was like, as I was doing, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be really bad for my back, and mm. all of a sudden it just just like a pinch. Just it popped. was like so yeah. I feel I feel like we could fill up a whole hour of of uh, watch Mache and Justin get old and bitch about it. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you definitely could. Uh, definitely. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, it's definitely like that, man. And I've definitely noticed that it seems like a lot of our f- friends and coworkers and other artists that we follow and admire, um, we all go through that period of like the stress of just dealing with the social network stuff. Like I just yeah. want to, you know what I mean? Like I just want to hang out and do art, but like it, it's so hard nowadays to do that and to jump into back into that, that vibe, um, and which was the original vibe of why I wanted to start a studio was because I, I liked working with other artists so they could call you out on your bad habits and, right teach you and push each other and do that kind of stuff and with today's market how it's going to where you know most studios could be run from just one single apartment you know what i mean like um you know there's studios out there that run that way yeah and i definitely that's how we run uh it makes total fiscal yeah it it makes total fiscal sense um and with today's you know connectivity and high speed internet and all that stuff uh it makes absolute sense, but there's something I feel like you miss out. You miss out on growing like that, you know? Um, mm. You know what I mean? It's just like you, you look at the team like at Marvel Studios, the team at Naughty Dog. Um, you know, everybody has that team, and they're all in one location. And, and man, you, you just make yourself better by, by surrounding yourself by other artists. Um, yeah, that's true. That's one of the things I'm I'm missing uh, from not being at Naughty Dog. You know, that's the fir- sort of like the first thing I've I've been missing for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a decision, which you know I stand by and I don't regret at all, to leave Naughty Dog. You know, pursue working in the film industry, and uh, you know the experiences I got from there are great. Obviously, you know there's good things and bad things about the industry itself. I feel like if you if you get to work with a team like Naughty Dog, with yeah. people like that work at Naughty Dog, you know, spe- specifically, you know, Aaron and and um, John Sweeney, Alex Neonakis, you know, all of those guys. Yeah, uh, Aton. Yeah, all yeah. those guys are just so nice and uh, just amazing, amazing artists uh, that I hate. Just kidding. No, I, abs- <laughs> I I absolutely love their work. Even, They're just so good. Yeah, even even you mentioned yeah. Marvel. You know, like um, I've met those guys a couple of times when I was uh, working on the Captain America, and now even even now, like n- I haven't met them now actually. Maybe next time I go there for a meeting, <laughs> I should say hi. It's a, yeah, yeah. Bummer. They're they're a good group. They're a good group. They're oh all, yeah, they're all yeah, very nice. They're Ryan. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those guys are fucking cool, man. Like really, really cool people. I have uh, a, a guilty guilty pleasure uh, just because of where I'm located here in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They usually do – they'll do like Marvel movies, but like they'll also do the art of book signings. So like I go like the premiere night or whatever and get all <laughs> get my art book signed by all the artists. That's I awesome. love going there and getting and saying hi and seeing them and, and uh, – it's pretty crazy. We were we were doing a total tally at the uh, at the office, and we had all of the Marvel Studio movies art of books, mm-hmm. and they're all like personalized and signed. And I was like, "Oh man, that's so rad!" Sweet, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's good I nerd to know I nerd people. out whenever a Marvel movie comes out. I love I love. It's no secret. Dan gives me a lot of crap, but uh, <laughs> you literally I, li- I like them. You literally like them. love all of those movies. Like I do. I'm oh a big God. kid. I'm I am a big Jeez. child. It's okay. Okay, I understand that. If you it, the way you say it like you're you're a big child, I get it. You know, when yeah, I was you a know kid, what I mean? You remember when you were a kid and you watched like Mortal Kombat and all Yeah, and you movies, thought it was like, a good movie. Ever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> those are the guilty pleasures, right? I mean, like, you know, Conan was not that good, but would you watch it every time it was on TV? Absolutely, you would. What are you talking about? Conan was the best. <laughs> I loved Conan, when, dude. When was the last time you rewatched one? No, look. If I would watch it now, I would say it's a bad movie. Pretty, pretty <laughs> obvious. It's pretty obvious, you know. But it's but if, one of those that you love from your childhood, and you'll always watch it over and over. Yeah, it's true. Hey, Home Alone, right? Every Christmas. Every Christmas, <laughs> you know. Every Christmas, you gotta watch Die Hard, in my opinion. Oh, that's, that's, that's true. A big deal. Yeah, that's another one. Like in Poland, yeah. those those were the only two movie available. <laughs> Home Alone. Exactly. Home Alone. Home Alone yeah. <laughs> Weird. I was just talking that with somebody the other day about how. It's kind of strange that there are no more live action kid movies being made like even even centered around holidays like can you name one Halloween live action film for kids other than Hocus Pocus and Goosebumps ironically so I don't know I didn't mean to do that no, it's okay. You should you should self plug. We should talk about your company too, because I'm I'm really interested in in that. But I, you know what? Like I don't know. There's not that many great movies that are coming coming out recently at all. I've watched. Okay, I really tried to watch. I try to watch the movies that are perceived as good ones. Yeah. Uh, on Netflix, because Netflix, for whatever reason, now have rights to everything. Um. <laughs> so. And I try to watch the the new Star Wars, The Last Jedi, uh, mm-hmm. and I really I stopped with the Leia flying through the air, like through the uh, <laughs> cosmos, or whatever. I was like, I, I, it was one of those I just gonna listen on the side, you know. And it was just it was a one big cringe fest, and that was like, no, that's it. I, I, I have to I time. have to say, even though that I absolutely love, you know, uh, I love all the Star Wars movies. I mm-hmm. love them. Maybe not the first, you know, episodes one through three. But there are some gems in there, especially there's one there's a there's a copy of one through three where someone edited all three of those movies into one two hour movie and it's it's really good. Like I wanna say it's really good. But uh because it, it starts with like Darth Maul and then it it just shows you that the most of that movie was was not relevant. Um but uh The Last Jedi, that moment is pretty cringe worthy. I don't know why they chose to do it that way. I don't there, know, there's man. a couple questions where I have questions. You know, there's a couple scenes where I have questions on why did you choose to do that? But other than that, I still thought like it was really cool. I really like the opening sequence. Uh, I'm a sucker for X wings, man. I'll take it with a caveat that you're a, a big kid, big little yeah. kid. Yeah. B- b- I, I never claimed I was. I was, you know, Siskel and 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 Ebert <laughs> or over there, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I've always had a saying where there's there's movies and then there's films. Right, 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 right. You know, like I Pulp Fiction know is a film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Men in Black is a movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a good it. movie. I like it, you know. And Men in Black you was know? cool. It was actually pretty yeah. good. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's it's like one of those Rick no- Baker, nostalgia. Rick Baker, man. Yeah. Can't one go of those wrong nostalgia with movies, too, you know. Oh, yeah. It's definitely, definitely Dan- Danny Elfman. You have mm-hmm. that opening, yeah. Man, that was. Yeah, it's a pretty iconic. Even though, like, when you watch it now, and, you know, some of those films, even though they're like pretty much a pop popcorn films, they still hold up. You know. Yeah. There's something about the cin- cinematography and the storytelling, and you know, you can take the most ridiculous story and make it really good. You know, if you do it right. If yeah. Like, um, what I don't like about the movies right now is just they are all turning into this mush you know it's like all of them looking the same all of them have this exactly same story arc you know you're almost never surprised by anything ever anymore and all of them look like exact like the vfx you could just enter interchange scenes from movie to another and you wouldn't even tell yeah it's getting it's getting strange yeah it's getting strange and i'm trying to think of like um who's the guy that did like like i thought that the um, the director for uh, Kong the Skull Island. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he Jordan, had a f- Jordan Vogt Roberts. Yeah, I thought that uh, he brought a fresh take to that. Right. Yeah, I've worked with. Is, him is he doing Metal show. Gear? Yeah. 
see that I'm excited now. You know what I mean? Like that'll be cool. I mean, I, I I'm excited because you know we 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 probably know like the whole design team that's working on that. I don't, you you're probably working on it. Well, hell if I know. But uh, <laughs> um, I'm always excited to see behind the scenes of and art of and world building in general. Um, yeah, I have I a lot of fun doing that nowadays. Like I, that's all I want to do. I don't want to. I don't want to do work for other clients. I just want to build mm-hmm. worlds for franchises. I don't know. Is that like a? Is that a job? Can you be a franchise? You know, developer? I'll tell you that. I don't know. Every, everything can be can be a job these days. You know, like I yeah. think I think that the proposition of doing um, you have to do this and that, and therefore you are a concept artist or a designer in film, whatever. I think yeah. that's rapidly changing, especially with the films and and um and video games sort of like converging with the with the you know um when you see like the vr coming into play like how it's changing the the industry slowly but surely you know we have more and more vr experiences available all that kind of stuff you know yeah um, i meant to say uh yeah jordan is like he is because I know him, I know him pretty well. Like not pre- not like friends, friends, but you know, I spoke with him a couple of times. I worked with him on the on the school island, and uh, you know, we've, we've been we've been holding a contact ever since. You know, with like just I would shoot him a question, and sometimes get an answer, like that kind of stuff. That's he's cool. the biggest. He's the biggest fan of uh, MGS. Like uh, hands down. That's what he I heard. Loves yeah. loves MGS. You know. Yeah, I he's saw good friends a really with Kojima too. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is like if he's approved him, then that's a good sign. Yeah. You know what I mean? That means that he's gonna do it justice. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I saw. I think I saw an interview of that floating around, or somebody showed me a clip of him and Kojima talking, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it's pretty good. But you know what? I'm gonna say something really unpopular here. I don't know. I don't know if I should. But uh, I don't. Say what you I don't want, get, man. I don't get Kojima games. I just don't <laughs> get them. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 was the last one I played that I really enjoyed. And mm-hmm. then all the other ones got kind of strange on me. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like everybody keeps... Uh, I don't know. Like keeps keeps talking about that new one. What's the one? I can't remember. Uh, Death, Strand- Death Stranding. Standing. Mm-hmm. Stranding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all... I mean, it, this, listen. The CG work is stunning Mm -hmm. but i just i i know that there's like a creepy story there but like i'm just tired of the wait and i just don't care anymore Mm. you know what i mean like i I just just it's too much teasing i'm tired now (laughs) don't you you think you know i I would curious to hear your opinion about it but it seems to me i'll still end up buying it but you know (laughs) for sure but (laughs) my question is like don't you think that the whole trailer teaser thing is just getting out of control a little bit like i've watched some of the yeah. teasers for and trailers for some of the movies that are coming out you know and and some of them i, I would I, that i've seen before and then saw the movie and it's like why do i watch the movie like everything is already in the trailer you know like the whole yeah. story is revealed all the characters and the plot twists are already there like what's the point of going to see the movie at this point so it's a good willpower test and I'll tell you what, what I do. Usually there's always like a 15 second teaser, mm-hmm. you know, that they'll put out. That's all I watch. Mm. I don't watch anything more. And I tell you what, I love the movies more. Makes sense. Yeah, because you're surprised by what, uh, by what you yeah. see, right? I don't really it watch took, trailers that much at all. But it's It just took like... everything in my power to not watch Infinity War trailers. It took everything. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really wanted to watch those. I don't but, think I've yeah. seen any of those either. Uh, but yeah, it's just like I don't know. I know it's you know in, in most cases it's just it's just the agency that is doing that. You know, they take upon the yeah. trailer, they get the material and they cut it and put it together. Like if there if there is a good director that does it, then the trailer turns out to be good. Um. But it's like with everything, you can get a bad director, and it's not gonna be that great at all. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be real careful because like the thing of it is, is I think that they show too much. Yeah, I think the the prime example of that was Terminator Salvation, 
that's the first one that comes to mind is that I remember in the trailer, spoiler alert for those that haven't seen it. Um, uh, for those who haven't seen the movie that was out I know. in the last 25 <laughs> years. 25 <laughs> years, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, when Marcus, uh, the guy from Avatar, the actor from Avatar, mm-hmm. uh, when it's revealed that he's a robot in the trailer... When they ha- they were trying to do like a big reveal in the film, and it was like, yeah, but we all know he's a robot. Yeah, you know, like it did. I was like, well, that was a really dumb decision. Like that would have been really cool if we found out. Holy crap! You know, halfway to the movie, the guy is not actually human; he's a Terminator hybrid or something. Right. I don't know. And I was like, that was the major point. That was like the calling card of this movie, and you're going to give it away in the first trailer that you release for it. <laughs> I don't, so I don't, stupid. that wasn't a good call. I remember, I remember I read it somewhere that, and I don't know if it's true. Um, it must have been one of those, you know, movie sites that like, for instance, um, the new Blade Runner. Yeah. Like you weren't supposed to know that Harrison Ford is in the movie until you actually see the movie. Like that was supposed to be a big reveal, and then the first trailer comes out. Comes out, <laughs> Harrison Ford. <laughs> God damn! Ah, oh, that's aggravating. Yeah, that would have that would have been a true. great don't, reveal. Don't, don't really, uh, um, I would be I would be surprised if it wasn't true. Uh, I mean, it sounds plausible that it, it's true that they meant to be that way, but yeah, I don't know, man. What I really goal? enjoyed that movie. I was uh, actually lucky enough. I have a. Uh, have some friends of mine that dropped off a piece of the uh, the miniature that they used to film Blade Runner. They gave me an original miniature oh, cool. from, yeah, and I was like, oh, I, I love practical effects. Oh man, yeah, Abs- practical effects are the best. They just like they they just are because it's just yeah. I think it's like, don't you think it's like the uh, traditional art? Like the practical practical effects have the same notoriety as traditional art, meaning. Definitely. Um, you 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 really appreciate them because you know how much effort goes into making them, and and, and it's and it's one of those efforts that it's not, it can be really trial and error because if you if you fuck it up, you basically have to start over. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's definitely it one of those. Yeah, it, because it's. I'm trying to think. The last person I had a conversation with that about was. Oh, I think it was uh, it was uh, it was Ian McCaig. Mm-hmm. Ian McCaig was chatting uh, with us. It was a while back, and you know he started talking about his days in at ILM. And I, I hope I'm not paraphrasing too much, but like um, about how they got to keep because they did everything in pencil, you know, and and traditional medium, and that they got to keep the originals. But then George would always pay them to own the originals as well you know what i mean like that was an on top of a of a fee thing because it, back then it, the original piece the original piece of art was a big mm-hmm. deal you know what i mean and like that we've lost that going into the digital era which is why we still have some people you know that say that you know like digital artists aren't aren't worth as or the the art that they produce isn't as worth as much as a traditional there's like that stigmata that happens where they're like oh well you're just a digital artist which really is aggravating because perspective is perspective line weights are line weights composition is composition whether you're doing it on on a piece of paper or digitally is just one of the most asinine things i've ever heard um i think it's just but yeah we talked about that for a while and it was interesting water with like the uh because of like the uh, photo bashing and all that kind of stuff you know it seems like it's an yeah. easy thing to do just to put the textures together it's funny when people say that and then they try it and it looks like crap <laughs> <laughs> you're right yeah you're just like hmm there's very few of us out there that can do both mm, yeah i i mean i can't i can't even honestly tell you the last time i i sculpted clay or um, you know, even sketched in a sketchbook. Uh, like I'm just doing it digitally now. It just makes sense to to do it all digital. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, even yeah. just for for work itself, you know, like no one's gonna hire you to spend 
weeks and weeks um getting like a digital s- or like a actual sculpture you know yeah it's have results and it's a shame a it's not i don't want to say that i'm like all for it or against it but you know what i mean like i you know it, it's a shame that people feel that way about doing traditional stuff but i mean you got to look at it like this you know it's like i'm sure that blizzard could 3d print out a statue every year Mm -hmm. but they would rather have the guys at alliance studios do their masterful you know uh work with you know steve wang and you know and 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 eddie over there like you know those guys every year they do something for blizzcon and it's always fantastic and one of a kind and yeah only those guys can do it so there's i mean there's there's I feel like the practical effects and designers and sculptors are some of the most uh, crafty and, I guess, clever people because they have to bounce around to so many fields to make everything work. Um, yeah. But, you know, I mean, Leg- Legacy embraced that pretty much pretty early on, too, didn't they? Like, they were... They were they were adding a lot of uh, 3D printing early on. Um, I yeah, I think, think so. Legacy has always been uh, like on the forefront. Experimental, of, yeah. Experimental things, you know. But that's that's you just that practical already, guys. Right? Uh, no, I haven't. I know them over there, but I haven't worked with Legacy yet. I've always gotcha. been trying to find something. I, I would primarily usually work with ADI. Um, I've done some work for Spectral Motion a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely love working with the uh, the practical houses. Yeah, it's fun because like it's just like all hands on and yeah, and it's like a little bit of a different experience that you have by doing that. Otherwise, it's like all kind of you know same o same o. Whereas this can become like oh, this is like a kind of cool different experience uh all together you know so hey i meant to ask you about your company actually because mm-hmm. i'm really oh, okay. really interested like the the time the first time i met you you know you were still freelance i think you were working with danny over at yeah. um at section nine section nine yeah <clears throat> then you know you got busy i got busy and then like later i can't remember when i discovered that but i found like you have a company Mm-hmm. And you're doing your own outsourcing studio. It's like, oh, cool, good for you, man. Like, <laughs> really, really happy to see that that's that's going on. So I was curious, like, what actually pushed you to do that? You know, like, is uh, did you always thought about making your own studio? You know, because ne- it was it was never un- it was never like I didn't go to Noman mm-hmm. to you know uh, I was I was at Noman for like a term. Or not a term, but like one year, like a year and one term or something like that. Right. <clears throat> and then, you know, I, I was still very curious on what I wanted to do f- in this industry. I was very lucky to get an, uh, you know, to, to get an opportunity to do concept art. And then from there, it kind of took off into um, doing il- like illustration work or using, you know, computer graphics to do that kind of stuff. And... The one thing that I liked is, you know, when I did get an opportunity to learn, you know, it, it was in a setting where I was surrounded by artists. And, you know, we we almost touched on it back, you know, in the beginning of this conversation where, you, you know, you guys had the, the Naughty Dog team. It's that team effort, you know, that team yeah. working. Um, I was, you know, I, w- I was still on my, I think, my second year living here. I didn't really know anybody. Mm. And, you know, that that really became like my second home and not having that kind of. I don't know, like I, I, I feel like I work better in those conditions. Right. And after freelancing, being on your own for like two years after that, I just wanted to get back to that. But I I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a full fledged studio Um so I came up with the idea of doing it like a barber shop, mm-hmm. you know. So a barber shop or a hairstylist, you know, when you go get your haircut, they're renting those tables, and then they pay rent 
you know, and like maybe a proceeds or something like that of, of what they do or how many clients they take to the guy that's renting the building kind of, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, so I just, I think it was right after goosebumps. I was like, you know what? I saved up some money and went to Ikea, bought a bunch of desks, built a, built a bunch of computers and was like, that's what I'm doing. You know, if you guys are freelancers and you want to work on whatever you want to work on, here's this place. Just pay a small fee for, uh, renting the desk and if you want to pay a little bit more I'll make sure that the fridge is stocked with whatever you want it to be mm-hmm. and then we we started out like that and it went well for like four or five months and everybody was doing their own things and then I was like hey you know do you guys mind if I start pitching you guys as a team you know or maybe I can get a job in where we can all work together on something and then you know that happened a couple times and then I've essentially looked at the numbers, which I should never do because I'm terrible with books and numbers. <laughs> but um, I, I was guesstimating. I was like, you know what? I don't think I need to charge desk rent anymore. It's just like I can just bring people in and do freelance jobs like that. And um, then I brought in uh, – or I, I was introduced to my business partner and – you know, he came on board and, and we've been trying to go uh, big or go home ever since, you know. We've been getting opportunities to do in-game cinematics now and working with AAA uh, game companies as well as, you know, toys and and uh, theme parks and a bunch of other stuff like that. So it's, it's very interesting. I never thought that it would go that way. Hmm. But, um, yeah, and even now, like, we're talking about doing our own line of of collectibles and, and and things that we can sell that we can create um, as means to stabilize the the industry work because you and I both know that this industry is up and down and it's never yeah. it's never a constant thing and that's something that because you want to work in the industry so bad you kind of ignore and think that it'll be okay but it's stressful it's stressful if you're not ready for it you know can catch you by surprise and it can and it's really yeah. like even even like the top the top dogs in the industry think think of, think about it all the time yeah I, I yet, i'm yet to see a person or uh artist that i know that would ne- that would be like oh, i'm chill like i'm so good i don't have to care about anything you know <laughs> like, I, i've yet to see a person that has that kind of thinking um most of them, like the best artists you could think of, they all are like super, maybe not super stressed out, but they always, they always have that possibility of like, you know, it can dry up like any moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest, um, pitfall Hurt. of, of, of yeah. being on your own and working as a freelancer or, you know, having a studio is like, what if? can always happen you know it can it can and always you know it's always when you least expect it which also you know having a sideshow uh habit is not wise to to start (laughs) yeah i have too many too many collectibles i should probably sell them all and buy a house (laughs) and that would be smart um but uh you know you gotta you gotta buy some stuff yeah, you, you got to have fun with it, or what, what's what's the uh, why are you doing it? You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, I, I I'm not really like a collectible guy. I actually had a <laughs> I have a lot of books, and uh, to be honest, like I gave away like half of them. Actually, I've noticed that you know it's really cool to have like a re- really large bookshelf of of things. Yeah. And then I don't know. It's it might be just my character that too much. Th- there's too much cleanliness. Is freaking me out yeah but also too much clutter is freaking me out and like it's like freaking me out bad like if it, it, make, if, it feels like overwhelming yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what that is is you know i don't know if i have asperger's or something or add i don't know what what that is but ocd maybe uh, or OCD. whatever whatever it could be anything but yeah it's, if there's like there's like almost like a invisible boundary where you know okay like this this amount of items on my desk I can tolerate, you know, they're <laughs> yeah. not bothering that much. But if you add 
a pencil to that whole thing, I'm like, I cannot work anymore. <laughs> You're like, I need, I need I my to workplace to be Zen. Now, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's weird. It's very weird. So, so get this, that means on a, so on a subconscious level, you're procrastinating something. Yeah. Because my my coordinator at my office has noticed that when a job is in or if there's something that I'm supposed to be doing mm-hmm. and I'm out there cleaning the bookshelves and rearranging the like statues, <laughs> she knows that I'm avoiding and procrastinating, even though I don't even know that I'm doing it because I'm always just like, eh, I'll just stay at the studio late and get it done. And it's like, no, just get it done and then go home like a normal person, you weirdo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just do I do that sometimes. And uh she I called me on it and now I'm man. aware of it. It is. It's a it's a demon that I think that a lot of us fight in it and it uh Yeah. It's a cop out. It could out. suck you in. It could it's it's a cop out. It's a cop out. Yeah, it's like you really just it's just your brain telling you like, Oh, it's too difficult. Like did you just wish like you can do a busy work and everyone else is just gonna see like oh you're working so hard but in reality you're just doing nothing like busy work that is meaningless you know (laughs) yeah that just happens a lot of time uh yeah i I think everyone every single person i know is guilty of it you know yeah agree it's very easy to get to get distracted i I think that you know it also comes in into a being where uh Sometimes, sometimes you need that though. Mm. It, it, it's I think it's it's about finding that happy medium where you know you can kind of just you know take a take a look at some you know art books before you start a job and or de- doing research reference gathering before you jump into it and using that as a as a time or a moment to center yourself and, and make mm-hmm. sure that you, you're you're aware to go do that job but um i feel that today everyone wants everything by tomorrow like we literally just got an email at seven o'clock tonight when we left the, you know everyone's leaving the studio and someone was like i need this by tomorrow can you do this and we're just like you know what man no like you can you can contact us in the morning and we can do something maybe but like last minute stuff like it's not going to be good and you're going to pay a lot of money for it like what why would you rush that why do you want that and i feel like we're in an era that is in the most most important part of production or art or developing anything how important pre-production is and that Mm -hmm. they want to skip over that and that makes no sense to me you know what I mean? Like when you find yeah. out like in a, in a multi-million dollar movie that someone didn't like uh, the cup a certain person was holding and that they spent money to digitally change it. Like what? Why? That should have been solved in the beginning. You know, like what? Or just I don't, I just, ignore it. You know it. what I mean? <laughs> or just ignore it. Like that's like an $80,000 change. And I'm like, man, you're micro. you're focusing on the wrong thing to begin with. You should mm-hmm. be exploring the characters and the story and not worry about what cup was in the background or what, you know what I mean? Like right. that's not, that was never the point of star Wars. You know what I mean? I would get it. If, if it's like, you know, uh, Stanley Kubrick, you know, being like super anal about making sure that almost every aspect of the shot is perfectly production design and works, works for, uh, as a support for yeah. the story. I get that. Or you know when you when you when you watch the documentary about um, Apocalypse Now, it's called uh, yeah. uh, Into the Darkness, I think. Into, uh, Heart of Darkness. Um, I think the, the it, documentary is better than the film, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. I, and, I think um, I think it's weird, right? Like, have you noticed that we just don't have those kinds of directors anymore? Yeah, I mean, I think like I why think why because, is that? I think it's because a lot of filmmaking these days is. Uh, people that went that came from business schools you know it used yeah. to be it used to be movie makers mostly that were i can't remember who was, was talking about it. it might have been rodriguez on one of his podcasts 
or one of one of the filmmakers was talking about it like it you know because there's so many film in film studios you know a lot of producers have a lot of business background they don't look at the films the same way as a director would look at the film you know yeah and right now the game is you know trying to make the profit because it's you know it's a volatile market it's not that easy to make a profit making movies yeah because there's so many layers to it you know it's yeah. a very complicated multi-layered issue you know i used to i used to think about those things in terms of oh i, I have like a my opinion answer on it mm -hmm. and usually that's what people do all the time hey i have you know this is my opinion this is the answer you know what there's so many opinions as many people they are so and w who knows if your opinion even matters or if it's really really accurate you know it's really hard to say there's just so many layers to it if you think about the yeah. movies right yeah yeah it's really hard it's really hard to tell why uh i think i think the answer is it is what it is and if I, I, I stopped overthinking things. I don't know, like, I would love to hear your opinion on this, too. But yeah. to me, it seems like overthinking things and having opinion is... It's something that people will, re will react to, obviously, but it's not really yeah. changing anything. Right, right. You know, it's like, it... I mean, and I talk to, you know, when when I go... When I go around, uh, you know, and, and and do lectures and talks and stuff like that, that's something that I, I see often that people tend to forget that at the end of the day, this is a business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it is an industry. And yes, we are we're all artists. And once you get behind the scenes, and you can attest to this, you understand. And it actually it actually makes me less critical as, critical of films these days is is that it's a miracle that it was made in the first place yeah you know what i mean like the amount of hurdles and the army you have to wrangle uh the different departments you know it's it's kind of insane yeah. and daunting and you know every every person that is involved um in in the end result is on, almost on their own personal little hero's journey. So I I'm I'm a lot more hesitant to call a film bad these mm -hmm. days. Not because I'm like in the beginning of my career I was very hesitant to go on any form of social media and go I didn't like this because of this this this, right? Yeah. Um because I was like I don't know where my next paycheck is coming from <laughs> and I would, you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of young artists to do that and I'm like you don't you don't know the real struggle of trying to find work and then them going, "Hey, we looked at your social media and you said my last film sucked balls." You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, well, yeah, I guess you lost that job. Like that was stupid." You know, like why would you do that? Yeah, you know? people have egos. Um you have to oh, yeah. take that to consideration in this business, you know, in any business, actually, you know, like if you're yeah. calling someone out, just you just know that that person is a human and humans make mistakes and humans are not perfect yeah. at all ever. There's no perfect Every, humans. Everyone everybody has their own judgment. issues and exactly, change, you know, and, and uh, it's good rule of thumb. I know it's cheesy, but everybody you meet, everybody you see every day of your life is fighting a battle that you know nothing about yeah that's why i don't listen, you know? listen to politics you know it's i i'm i'm exposed to it inadvertent inadvertently because yeah. you know anytime i go on youtube the algorithm for some reason wants to show me everything that is going on it's it's always like two pages of trump um mm -hmm. and i really don't care you know you know what's baffling to me and i i think people just have to understand that like it's very easy to call out someone say you are this and you are that oh you're like uh you're a republican you must be stupid or you're like a libtard and you just you did this this and that you know what i think majority of the people don't care i think there's only the, the loudest people are online and screaming screaming hard and give you a perception that that's what it is i also think the social media just allows absolutely stupid people to um have their stupid opinions that no one cares about. I've wrote about th this on uh, on Facebook recently. Um, yeah. This phenomenon. Um, 
gosh, I forgot what it's called, Kruger something, where you think, uh, it, it, where you have a perception that you have more knowledge than you really have and more expertise than you really have. So you're like in yeah. this kind of bubble, bubble where like I'm, I'm such an expert. Everyone should really, you know, listen should to my listen opinion. To yeah, but you, yeah. You, you, you literally are ill-informed totally. You should not have an opinion until you read a book. You know. Exactly. I, you know, I like I, I look at it like this. Um, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but what I listen to are um, facts. Yeah. Because facts, you know what I mean? Like, you may say that a film didn't do well or that it sucked, but if it made $400 million in the box office, I beg to differ. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. just the the money talks and bullshit walks kind of a mentality. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, hang on. Like, somebody, somebody sent something to me in – I'm looking it up right now just so I can quote it properly um, – and this is like an, a, t a testament. Now, I, I, I follow my train of thought, if you will. Um, but somebody sent me this meme where it was just like, um, so how old were you when you found out what the game TAG stands for? Do you, do you know what TAG stands for? Mm, I'm not sure in which context. I guess like... You know, uh, do you know like when you were kids, you'd play TAG? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, right? Yeah, we, yeah. We, all grew, we all grew up with that. Yeah. And I asked everybody in the office what it stood for. And we got, you know, you got people that are, you know, uh, 50 all the way down to 21, right? Yeah. No, nobody knew. It stands for touch and go. Hmm. Right? Interesting. So taking that knowledge and then looking at that and going, man, out of everything that we do and all the information that we, have bom we bombard ourselves with, and we regard our opinion as higher than fact, there's so much of the little things that we just don't know yeah, and have no clue about, we just take for granted. I know that's silly to say about just like knowing what the word tag stands for, but it's kind of... I think it proves a point. It proves a point, right? Like, yeah. may, you know, if in a room full of people, some adults and, you know, and even, even down to kids don't know what something stands for, but we all inherently know what it is, says something about today's uh media and and the way of life where it, we've just become so norm like we don't even ask where things came from and we don't understand where they came from yeah it's um, a cl clickbait yeah. culture just you yeah know, read the very headline, much so. read the headline and fuck off basically yeah just, just getting caught on that i agree with you man it's like yeah. that's why i stopped reading comments on pretty much anything I yeah. like to I like yeah. to stay in touch with the community that you know appreciate what I do, you know I try to put put out my best and if I have time to reply to you know people that ask genuinely, you know they they are looking for guidance or whatever. If if I can give any of that, that's perfect. You know, teaching yeah. does that too. You know, like if yeah. someone takes it seriously, you know you can push a person in the right direction and you know see where it goes. And if they if they take take the lesson properly, they will you know, take a benefit out of that. And you get those messages every now and then like, Hey, you, like I listened to oh, your yeah. podcast and I get, I get those messages like once a month. I think I, I, I don't want to brag, but I think it's just like, <laughs> it's a good it's, feeling. It's, 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 well, it's a good, it's a good, uh, I guess scale or self-awareness that you're, you're doing good in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're giving back and that's, that's always a great feeling, you know, um, it makes me want to do more you, of it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I I loved. I never thought that I I would love teaching. <laughs> um, but when I when I was given the opportunity back in the day when uh, Red Engine was open, um, I enjoyed it. You know, like I did That's tutorials where it started for me as for, well, man. That's yeah, you know, I I Steve liked Jung. it, and yeah, Steve Jung Jung Park, man. Uh, I was sad to see Red Engine go. Um, I met a lot of great students. Met a lot of uh, young artists and friends, and you know a lot of people through there. And I thought it was, it was a good time to teach. I think I taught there for about a year, and um, I've kind of tried to keep a live, like uh, I always want to say, like live action class every year. You know, we did one at, at Brainstorm recently, and I love doing that. Uh, Brainstorm is a great school as well. Um, and I in in you know just the, the venues of like Learn Squared that's great, Schoolism's great, Nomen's great. Like just to be 
aware that this industry exists at a younger age, I would have killed for. Yeah. You know Me what I too. mean? Like, right. I, I wish I would have gotten into it sooner. Um, I wish I would have not listened to other people sooner and just went for it and did it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I feel agree. like I'm rambling or going off on a tangent. No, but, it's uh, good. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, like, you know, looking at in the hindsight and, you know, you can say, I wish, I wish it's all true. And it's just great that it's, it's there right now, you know, yeah. like we should cherish the fact that you can get educated really well for a fraction of a cost of what it used to cost back, back in the days. How many people, you know, that are like balls deep in, uh, in their, uh, student loans? It's a lot. It's crazy. A lot. And I, I, it saddens me. It really does. I, you know, I, I still, I still owe, my, owe money on, on my loans and I didn't even go for the full, you know, thing. Mm. I'm just trying to make the business work, you know, and I'm hoping that, you know, uh, someday soon that we just, you know, we, we, we get the exact number of clients that we need and, and everybody can live comfortably and, and I, then I could start paying off school loans and stuff like that. But that, that's a real weight and a real issue for a lot of people out here, um, and I think that the education system in America needs a drastic rehaul. I think it's going to collapse. I'll be honest with it, you. I think it's the next home scam, you know, or the home uh, equity or whatever that was called back in the yeah. day, the uh, the bubble. I feel like that and or the car industry, the bubble's going to burst. Yeah. You soon. know, it's, you know, I think it's going to collapse. Why I think it's going to collapse. You know, I think there are reports already that, uh, the signups for like the regular universities are like record record low. And for oh really? Reason, I didn't yeah. even know that. And for whatever reason, um, universities just became this thing that uh, they just you know I'm not talking about Harvard and places yeah. where you're like genuinely getting the knowledge from the best. You know, if you're in Silicon Valley and you're and you're in, you know in Stanford, you're you're with the best in the industry you have teachers yeah. that are the best like people working for facebook and whatnot you know yeah you get you get like first-hand knowledge on how to become a good businessman how to become good developer like all of those things matter i i get those places you know but yeah like all of those weird degrees like business degrees i think lawyers will be in the in the rough road in the next 10 years you know, looking at just look at legal zoom. Like legal zoom just took away, I think, half of the lawyer jobs easily, if you if you think about it. Yeah, um, I mean, it, if you can automate certain things, which a lot of it in the legal system you can. It's kind of you know. It's the same with the. You got to be able to adapt, and, and I don't degree. think that people. Yeah, medical degree. Yeah, they adapt. There's a lot. Quickly. Yeah, and art is. I think you know. I'll I'll only talk. I like to talk about the things I know. Art, the universities, 99% yeah. of the universities out there are a scam. Don't fall for it. You're, you're, yeah. And especially in US, it's, it's, it's really infuriating me that universities, I'm not going to name names. People can come, come to their own conclusions. But the universities, what they do is they tell you you're going to get a job, which is a lie. They can never guarantee you that. Um, they ask yeah. you to pay a high tuition, which puts you in pretty much a mortgage debt. When you're when you're like so young, you're actually still stupid. You don't really know what you're doing. Yeah. And then the worst thing and is in this country, if you take a student loan, you cannot bankrupt on it. You cannot get out of it. It's a in the in the oh term, yeah for uh, servitude. You're it's a. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's just like you're it's fucked. It's a terrible, yeah, it's a terrible system. Yeah. Um, I'd say, I'd say that you would, I will probably see the rise of more trade or skill based schools happen soon. Mm. If it's not already already, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's why Nomen is, is been so successful is just like, you know, they churn out CG monsters like, you know, day in, day out over there. And that's, that's kind of a testament to their, their, their curriculum, but they don't, they don't kind of, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, you didn't have to take a Western Civ class or something like that. I don't know. Things could be changing over there. I don't know. But, like, mm-hmm. it seemed very specialized where you could get in, get out, and start working. Um, but even then, you know, all you know, all college is expensive. But Let's see, it, Alex it's some Alvarez. Of those you know Alex, right? Like, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's actually a, good guy. Like a really good guy. Yeah. And he's he's an artist. He cares. Like, he's us, basically. So, yeah, and that school know. cares. I really... I, yeah, I have my, a pretty one of my high biggest opinion regret, about Noman. Yeah, one of my biggest regret was not being able to, to go full-time. I just didn't have the money. Right. The question you is know. if you need to, you know. That's another well, question. Do you I, really one, one, would, one would argue that even, even having my own business and working on the things that I've worked on, I still feel like I missed out on knowledge and understanding and not to say that I didn't get thrown in the fire and pick up a lot of uh, uh, things that way. Mm -hmm. You can do it that way if you're given that opportunity, but not everybody's given that opportunity. And I was very um, right. Lucky, lucky in that, in that per chance, you know, but I, I'll say it again over and over that, you know, uh, when I was in school at Noman, the only reason I'm here today and have a business and have a career was because, you know, Jared Morantz wanted me to have an internship and working with him really pushed me, pushed me into a realm uh, of doing work that was more professional of the work than that I was previously doing right. and just sparked an interest in me. So I definitely owe my, uh, my career to that guy who just had a baby. Who's oh, big I didn't know that. Now. Yeah, I yeah. I should probably text him and say congrats, congrats. to him. Yeah. Congrats, bro. I didn't know that. I've, I, yeah. I haven't seen that guy in in ages too. Uh, we work. I, I've seen him like almost every day when I was uh, on Captain America, because <laughs> he was there. Yeah. Or I think he was working on it too. Um, yeah, he's a cool guy. No, like Noman does it does it does it right. You know, they have people that, that they've been they've been doing online um, workshops. They, they've 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 pretty much pioneered the online workshop thing. The DVDs, you know, those were always like really good base especially that's still a bucket list for me i i would i would almost do it for free at this point just because i want (laughs) to you know what i mean where it's just like yeah i know that you know it'd be it'd be a a strange thing to do a dvd or or something nowadays when nobody really uses dvds anymore but uh getting getting to do a series for gnome has always been a bucket list thing Hmm. ever since the moment i knew they existed you know they have a good history and they are pretty well regarded at least i have haven't heard uh I don't think I've heard anyone complaining about them, and maybe I'm not talking to the right people, but that just gives you a testament that they're doing something right. And and similarly, you know, Art Center, they have a lot of really great teachers. Uh, they've always, you know, they've historically been uh, one of the best art schools out there, you know, art universities. Oh, yeah. And yeah. They, turn, they turn, like, a lot of really great artists that enter the industry, you know, look at the uh, Seifel, and look at the uh um there's quite a few kang lee you know jamie oh Jones. god there's just so yeah. many people that james big john park yeah let's go out you john, know go down john the list park, exactly yeah there's just so many great artists that had had at least something to do with that school you know whether they are uh the alumni or they've been connected to it one way or another you know yeah and it's expensive you know but the expense comes at the cost of you know Hey, like maybe you're not savvy enough to do your own research. Maybe, maybe yep. you know, there's just so many things that come into play to make the so, right decision. Yeah, definitely. I mean, some some people get uh, some people just get stuff. Some people know how to research things and look at things in a analytical nature, and yeah. some people don't. They need to be told to do that. You know, like you know, I remember. You know, I remember going to a Photoshop class and just, you know, seeing people grab photo textures and blend it into the paintings. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, you, you can do that? Like, oh, like I was like, I was like, I, I was looking at images by like, <laughs> by like, you know, Dylan Cole and being like, I don't understand. You yeah. know, like, how do you paint <laughs> like that? And then, you know, when somebody finally tells you like, oh. Yeah, you can do that, or oh, you could paint on top of a render. It doesn't matter. You're still, it's still art, you yeah. know. And you're just like, oh, like that changes 
your perception and then it becomes you know art art gods become less art gods and they more become like you know like uh you know art heroes because you're like oh it's attainable i yeah if i work hard i can i can figure this out you know and uh, you know you'd be amazed how many people and you know you teach and 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 i teach that just don't even understand how to just google something yeah you know like it's it's literally you know it's in everyone's pocket and no one seems to you know and that's just i think that's one of those life skills like either you either know how to get reference and find information or you don't um you know you need a it's person just, like sometimes you just need a person to point you in the right direction and um uh, places like art center or Noman can be those places you know but that's that's also goes without saying like the online schools do do the same thing in, in an exactly same uh, efficiency. It's just the problem is there's a thousands of years of universities, you know, like not thousands, but there's like centuries of of the the institution of university, and people from the moment they are born, they you know they get taught in the school system. You kind of understand the whole system. You're being brought up with it, yeah. so it it it, it legitimizes the 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 university in your eyes, thinking like that's the that's the that's the proper way to um, get educated because you are in the system. You 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 learn that way throughout yeah. your whole life. It, it becomes almost like a habit for you. And then, how do I find the right school online? Which which one's good? There's so many. You know, it's really hard oh, yeah. to tell. So I, I yeah. get that that's that's an issue, you know, it's 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 a really big issue because, you know, I, look, I have online school. <laughs> I know it first. Oh, no, no, no. it <laughs> No, I and I so. agree, you know, it, it's but it's it's one of those things where it's adaptability, right? It's like yeah. if you can't find access to the job that you want, you know, you you find a way. You either talk to your peers. You know, it, like, it sounds silly, but it's like if you wanted to be a dentist, why wouldn't you go talk to other dentists to find out where they went to school? It makes no sense to me why you wouldn't, you know. Or, you know, mm -hmm. what if one dentist goes, yeah, I went there, but I had a terrible time. My buddies say this school is really good. Uh, and there's, you know, they're working in the same field. It's stuff like that, you know. Um that's also one of my biggest pet peeves, and I don't. It really bothers me when older artists bitch about that. Where they'll, you know, they'll be like, you know, why is so and so doing a tutorial, or what? They've only been working in the industry for like four years or something, and they'll say like, oh, like he doesn't deserve to do a tutorial. It's like, man, that's not. That's the wrong way of thinking. If he learned something and he wants to share, yeah why would you be against that and you know w the reason you guys are pros is because you put 10 years plus into working your craft at at a knowledgeable level where you know sources of information and techniques came very slowly to you imagine if you were 18 and had a high speed internet connection you yeah, know what I, you I know think, what i mean I like that, more that, than it, that for sure you know what I mean? Like it's, but I know it, what you it, mean. You know, yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, I don't understand. Like, I, I remember hearing about an artist that was complaining that he had a, a bunch of artists making stuff that looked like his stuff. And I was like, don't you teach a class? And he's like, yeah. And I go, well, if that bothers you, then stop teaching. Yeah. You know, like, the, the asinine level that people, the ego have, that people have in this industry sometimes... Is, is dauntingly, insecurity. yeah, insecurity. And, like, I guess understanding that all artists will have that either forever or sometimes you just do less of that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. understand that we're all insecure. You're insecure. I'm insecure. I'm sure John Park is insecure. I'm sure Ian McKaig is insecure at sometimes. You know? Yeah. We all he go is. through it. We he all is. do. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's how it's either you let it uh, fuel you, or you let it take you over, and then you know that's that's when that's when the people that stay in the industry stay in the industry, and the ones that don't leave. You got to feed the right wolf. Yeah, 
I think you I think you hit it on the on the spot, you know, with, with that. I agree with you hundred yeah. percent. It baffles me when I hear um about artists, you know, like like complaints like you should not be doing that. Like I mean, do you hate America? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> do you hate America? Well, right right now? No, I'm just kidding. But you, you know kinda it's, right now, I do. I guess what I'm trying but. to say is like are you so insecure that you think that that person's teaching will hurt your own brand? Like, if you're insecure like that, yeah, like you're not mm -hmm. thinking about yourself enough, you know? Um, I don't mind, and you know, like the, sometimes... The, the real harshness, though, the real mm -hmm. harshness is that if you're not getting work like you used to, you're not that good anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, exactly. It, exactly. It's not a nice thing to say. But if you can take that as me not being mean to you and understand that when you open up art station and you're you know you're complaining about not being in the top row or picked or whatever or anything like that it, it's not it's not an industry where you know if you know people you just get stuff you know what I mean like mm -hmm. or you get picks it 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 means that you've done the hard work and you're getting attention. Don't worry about getting attention. Just do good work, and attention will come to you. Yeah. I think that that you know your your peers and your friends will know. Like if 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 you put out like a really killer piece, every one of us is going to share something. We're going to be like, holy shit, look at this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like this guy leveled up, and that's that's the best feeling in the world when your friends step in and your peers and other coworkers are like. Hey, you killed it on this piece, or that that shot in that movie was amazing, or that design is stunning. You know that stuff um, is is how you go up in numbers, and if if you're even paying attention to that, you know, um, all of us on some level think about that from time to time. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard not to. Um, you know, oh, why does he have so many followers than me? Or, you know, shit like that. That's insecurity. That's insecurity creeping in. And you know what? It'll happen when it happens. You know, a friend yeah. of mine recently told me, you know, because I've been wanting to um, direct cinematics for a very, very long time. And I was trying to do it for, you know, for, since two years ago, you know. And just recently we we're, we're getting that opportunity where I get to step in and, and and not only art direct but actually direct a commercial or direct a, a cinematic and he said you know what he goes you may have been ready two years ago but the universe is ready now and mm. i was like oh well okay maybe that's true you know um yeah or maybe maybe you weren't ready and now you are it's just that's how the world works you never know with that kind of stuff i'm not saying that that's karma or anything like that but you have to be aware of Sometimes you get work, sometimes you don't. You just got to keep working till you get noticed. You got to keep working, and you know, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm full of with the cliches tonight, but you know, you got to keep working till you know uh, they can't ignore you. Yeah. You know, I I don't think there is some. It is cliche to say a lot of those things, yeah. but it's just true. It, you know, it you is. You have a business, right? You have a business. Yeah. When you started yeah. a business. Uh, you you knew nothing about the business. I and didn't you know. Would, you, you, I'm pretty sure you you've looked up uh, a countless of materials and tried you tried to figure out which one's the best one for me to actually learn what the business is, <laughs> what right. to look and after. It, it the the realness is the school of hard knocks. You got to fail before you can win. <laughs> exactly. You know. You uh, learn. You, you, learn you, you gotta way, you gotta screw fastest. up jobs. You 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 know. Um, you got to learn to you have to learn it's a hard lesson you got to learn to take too much work on and lose a client to realize that nope i know my limit now yeah you know or um yeah you know yeah it's crazy and that With that's that happened that that hurts when that happens especially cuz the the community is very small yeah. so you know i i've had a job where you know i i thought i could do it and i let somebody down and it's the it's it's uh it, that sucks yeah it's that the insecurity sucks. that creeps in and like oh, I, i'll take everything just in case yeah. you know and then you end mm -hmm. up just like 
not paying attention to a job and that gets you and in, in the trouble i've been there i've been there too i think you know i've never been sort of told like we're firing you because you suck or you fucked up here i never had that but i'm pretty sure yeah. some of the projects that stopped abruptly were due to just me being overworked and doing way too much things all at once and not getting the right results you know I'll yeah, be surprised no, if that yeah not, case. not giving it the attention it deserves is the number one way to kill a job yeah exactly i'm pretty sure yeah. it happened it's just like you know, you never know why it happens, but then, like in the hindsight, you look back. Yeah, I probably just, you know, should have shouldn't have done that. So it's very hard. It's, to it's say never no. intentional, as well. You know, it's never. Mm. No artist ever wants to really ruin a relationship, but like sometimes it sometimes it happens. You know. Yeah, it happens to the best people. It really. Oh, happens. we we got we have some questions here. Yeah, I'll read them very soon. Um, oh okay yeah don't worry about oh wow that. we have a lot of questions <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> sorry guys in the chat i totally didn't see that oh, behind my window over here it's um, i apologize little awesome peeps that decided to actually watch this instead of you know doing something more entertaining you know <laughs> a lot of people will watch this uh, and listen to it afterwards too so yeah I, I, you're I not you're to... not missing anything this is this yeah. is not a pretty face so you're, no, you're I'm all trying, right i'm paying attention to the chat and you know um i try to make it look like I, I i i'm i'm not but i'm reading pretty much a lot of what you guys are saying i just like <laughs> to focus on conversation and keep the qa yeah. towards the end and it's also for you know there's there's more and more of you guys that like to listen to uh to the podcast like on itunes and now on stitcher as well and um because it's fun, you know, like uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts just, just by listening to it and I can focus and do something else. I don't have to watch it. So yeah, it's like a really, really powerful medium. So that's why I like to keep the QA at the end because just like it, asking questions in the middle just breaks the conversation. Um, it does. It does. But yeah. no. Yeah. But yeah, man, like I, you, you, you said it right. Like if you're not getting calls, like if, if you know, if you're not getting a job, you cannot blame others for that. You know, you should only blame yourself. No, no, you know? yeah. It's like, it means you're not good enough. It's as simple as that. Yeah. It's some true um, meritocracy, this business, you know? Yeah. Like, why would you hire someone who's who's not that great if you can hire someone else whose art is, like, way better? And, guys, listen, the reality is majority of the jobs you will ever get, like, the majority of them is going to be through the referrals. Mm-hmm. It really, it really works that way. It really is. It really is. So, or you're, or, or you have a, a conscientious, um, uh, production designer that is on the internet and knows where to find stuff and looks at art. I mean, I mean, I've gotten jobs from ArtStation. I've gotten yeah. jobs off DeviantArt. You know, it, it, you mm-hmm. never know where it's going to come from. But that's one of those things, also, guys. Is like if you don't put yourself out there, no one's going to discover you anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that the next Beatles has been, you know, is is on SoundCloud, but we'll never discover them because they're in a sea or a mass of other everybody else yelling at the same voice, <laughs> the same level. So you know, it's like you just gotta you gotta keep putting your stuff out there, and sooner or later, somebody that matters will will pay attention. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's more and more bands that get discovered through the internet, you know, through the word of yeah. mouth, and like, and it that's just the gives best. You a lot of you know. Yeah, it gives you a lot of notoriety. Like if you if you know how to build a fan fan base, you know, and you have a really good like you'll you'll never do it if you have a shitty product. Like just just let let this out of the way. Yeah. From the get go. Like there's no way you're gonna be good if your product is not good. And that, by product I mean, you know, your yeah. your music or your artwork, you know? It has to what? be interesting enough for people yeah. to pay attention. I mean, it, it also helps to have friends in the industry or other people who are trying to get in to the industry. You know, use those networks that you guys have, you know, create a, a Facebook group, start a Discord chat or whatever. Yeah. All of those people, because like if you hang out and you're working on art and you're all trying to get good, I can't tell you enough how important it is to be social in this in, in this entertainment industry in terms of that, because if someone gets a job, 
and there's an opening at that job and you're like, oh, my homie's been working really, really hard on doing character design. I'm going to tell him to apply and, you know, that it happens, you know, it happens. Yeah. Uh, and people want to be able to work with you in a social environment. So if you're constantly hiding in a corner of your room or not getting out there, it, it doesn't it's not helping you. Yeah. Be social, share your techniques, learn from each other. You're going to get good, you know. Um I my my biggest pet peeve is the term self-taught. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. It's the biggest bullshit thing I've ever heard of. Oh, I'm self-taught. Really? <laughs> you didn't read you didn't read anything. You didn't look at an image, you yeah, didn't look in the at literal a picture. terms. In the yeah, yeah. Terms, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's that's just the most asinine thing. I, I remember a lot one, of people one say, time. Yeah, so sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, I remember one time. I like. I think I got into it with an artist online, or something like that, and he was saying that like, like literally, like in like if if it was like a Twitter feed or something like that, mm -hmm. he would be. He was just like, oh, I took this so and so tutorial class and learned so much from this character or this person, and then like. Two hours later, it's just like, I'm so good. I'm self-made. Nobody can call me out on my shit. And I was just like, yeah, but you just took his tutorial. <laughs> so you just learned from him. You know what I mean? Like, Burn. <laughs> I don't. Uh, that's dumb. Don't don't proclaim that. Like, that's weird. That's just yeah. weird. I think a lot of people say it's self-taught in a way that you're not uh, uh, coming from, like, the regular, you know, in... The regular university system you know where yeah. you just sort of like take the matters in your own hands and you learn from the tools that are uh, available for you and in that terms yeah that means that's basically what it is you know yeah um i think majority of the people think that way but yeah i, I guess like if you're bragging that you know i just fucking made it myself and and i had no no one influencing me that's that's just, just disingenuous you know like we yeah. are influenced by everything about all, all the time. So you cannot say that, you know, I could have done it without anyone's help. No, you wouldn't. The yeah. reality, like, the reality the, the is only, you wouldn't. <laughs> the only story I'm going to believe is like a 10-year-old boy, fell, you know, from a village, figured out how to, you know, create his own paint from pigments and brushes and did everything without an interconnect internet connection and their village has been undiscovered that kid was self-taught you are not you have the internet you're full of shit like <laughs> you're looking at images you're studying from them you're not self-taught yeah that's not true yep and and even you know like leonardo and you know uh, da vinci and and all the greats and michelangelo yeah they all used reference oh yeah they they would sketch, i never i think i was uh, and then yeah. paint over it and would look at the, the actual reference, you know. For me, that was the hardest lesson to learn because I just assumed – because I, I wanted to be a, com a comic book artist for a very, very long time. I just assumed you had to have all of that in your visual library and know how to draw it. And I was like, oh, man. And then it never occurred to me of like, you know, oh, just have books with photos and, you know – sketch from there and and you know build up a, a reference library and pull from that and then you're just like oh that's like you i can almost point in my nomen uh, in my nomen portfolio like when i first applied there to mm -hmm. when i left i can almost pick point the the three months in where i found out you can use reference <laughs> you know what i mean where you're just like oh oh yeah yeah it's Never-ending yeah, topic, I, man. Like you just even, never know. Yeah, you know yeah. the painters. They would, the um, like to get the perspective right. They would just build mm -hmm. like wire wire frames. You know, actual like with wires or mm -hmm. or with knits. They would just like put the the little lines together, and sort of like construct it in in three-dimensional space with wooden sticks and whatnot, just to see how it looks in perspective. They would place it right next to their painting to know what it's going to look like and use that as a base for sketching. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's not like, oh, they came up with it. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> or what is it? Have you ever seen the old school prism trick? Uh, I probably have, but I don't remember anymore. <laughs> it, it's like you, you, it's like, it's some sort of lens that as you're sketching, uh, 
it's it's mirroring what you're seeing. So like if you have a live model, it's mm-hmm. it's like you get double vision, and on the paper is like almost like an image of the model. Like you're not even looking up, and you can just trace. I can't remember what it's called. I was not aware of that. But Da Vinci used one. You oh, know, like you it, it, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that makes sense. That's, you know, but there's always gonna be that cheater. one asshole in the room that's like, yeah, cheater. Like, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Everyone digital art different. digital art is a cheat. I love that one. That's my yeah. favorite. You're when cheating. You have control Z, I guess. You still have to yeah. put time into it. Otherwise it's not worth anything for you. Just just like any skill. You gotta put your ten thousand hours in. Yeah. It takes time. Everything takes time. You might yep. call it cheating. Just yeah, whatever. I think uh, I think people get caught up on being uh, being a commentary than being a creator. You know, at the end of well, the I day. think I think that there's well, I mean, there's a lack of understanding what what a production artist is mm-hmm. and a traditional artist. Right. There's those are two different fields. Even just like saying like there's a major difference between an illustrator and a concept artist. Yeah, there is, of course. You can be a concept artist and not be an illustrator. You can be an illustrator and be a concept artist, but those are kind of rare. What do you think about Beyonce and Jay-Z being added to Lover? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just being, threw you off. You yeah, know I Beyonce, was like not prepared for that. I was like, Beyonce, huh, what? You know who Beyonce is, right? Beyonce yeah, I know. and Jay-Z. <laughs> Yeah. You know they have their own ex- exhibition in in Louvre, right? In Paris. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that? Am I? I think. Am I too traditional and too old to say it's fucking ridiculous? And it's no. just it's just basically no. idiocracy. Uh I don't know. I want to know more. Did did they design it themselves, or did they? I don't know. Did they hire designers to do something for them for the Louvre? You know what I mean? Like I don't. I want to know more before I can, because I don't want to sound like an ass. Do you really think Beyonce's and Jay Z's music is is that valuable to put it like alongside of Da Vinci, Michelangelo? Now, Carvaggio? now, no. In twenty <laughs> years, possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You know, you never, you never know. I mean, do can you say that they influenced pop culture? Absolutely, they did. Yeah, they did for sure. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, riffing on the, the quality of the, what they do. I just think it's not the right place. And I, maybe right. it's just well, me being a traditionalist. It's my, it's my own opinion. Obviously, yeah, but, but. Uh, but I'm I'm of the same accord where, like, you know, like, if they had a screen used R2-D2, should that be in a museum? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, maybe. You know? Yeah. That changed it. I think that you have to go by impact as well as... Uh, how it was made, I guess. You know, I mean, did right. it have a major impact? Did they leave a mark on the industry? They definitely did. Time will tell if they will be, you know, this generation's Michael Jackson, or you know what I mean, like that. I don't know. The jury's I'll, out on that. But right, I, I would get if, if it was like the Beatles. You know, I would not yeah, protest that. Yeah, I think that's you know? that's justifiable because they were almost everyone knows who the Beatles are or or where you know yeah, yeah. you you don't have it to listen it affected everybody yeah. it at some point some point in, in, li- the in their life changed the industry dramatically oh my little sister i remember in when my little sister hit high school like i remember like when it was weird to see a generation like discover the beatles <laughs> For the first time, you know what I mean, like in in like like the early '90s or late '90s, you know, I had a little sister who was getting in high school, and and you know she was all about it, and I just like I would just be like, I remember listening to this when I was way younger than you, yeah, or you know what I mean, or to see it's interesting to see how pop pop culture recycles itself, mm. yeah, you know it what does. I mean, or something is relevant. Like synthwave is big now. That was '80s to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. It has that '80s vibe, and and everything that we're doing has that '80s vibe, and it's we're coming back to it. And I'm not dissing it. I I love that stuff, but you know, I feel that also that nostalgia 
uh, nostalgia is a powerful thing right now, and I think that it's like the uh, it's the infinity gauntlet of bad decisions. <laughs> nostalgia, you know right. what I mean? Like we love yeah. nostalgia, and we'll go see it. You know, like you know, I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for Star Wars. I'm a sucker for Thundercats and stuff like that, and stuff you grew up with, Transformers. Yeah, you know, it may be you know some things that come out may be garbage, but I'll always go see it. Because I don't trust anybody's opinion. If I like something, I like something. Yeah, you kind of want to make your own opinion about this, and just yeah. keep, it, keep it your own. Yeah, I I, I try to tread lightly here because you know I, I say one thing and then I criticize this it makes makes me almost be a, a hypocrite, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bit. you and you do, and you don't want to, you know. That's why I yeah. I try to, you know. I'm not losing my sleep over it. Let's put it this way. Right, right. Like you, <laughs> we, but you have to. You do have to say that you know, like certain things, they'll either bother you or or they won't. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, it takes a lot. If I mention something on social media that I didn't like it, it's it's usually because I feel really strongly that holy shit, that was a bad idea. Yeah. You know. Um, it takes a lot for me to break that that negativity silence, and that's not just because I'm you know I'm trying to be Mr. Positive. You know, it's just one a. I think it's bad business to bash a movie when you're in the movie industry because you it's. I don't think, and I'll say it again. Anyone that's listening to this, you have no idea how small this industry actually is. Yeah, you really don't. You really don't. Um, and I, I, try I think to it's okay to say that. you didn't like it, and you know you, you can have yeah, your own opinion. It wasn't for you, but if you go off on like a twenty-page rant of why you hated something, yeah, it's like, well, yeah, someone will remember that, and you won't get <laughs> hired, you know. And you may not like something, and not, and that's the hard, the cold hard truth, is that every job that you, every movie you work on, every video game you work on, it it may not be the one you enjoy, but you have to do it if you want to work in the industry, you know. Yeah. Nobody wants or do your, nobody do your own thing. Yeah, or do your own thing, which yeah. is I'm a big advocate for that, you know. And seeing Luvizi follow his 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 passion and do his thing is the reason I wanted to do my own thing with the studio. Yeah. Uh and and now I'm working on my own IP and and that stuff, you know, I've been working on it for a while, but it, it's, you know, it's come and go and I don't have an art director, so I get to make all the decisions and really dive deep into lore and you know i just recently got a, a friend of mine named bowman in on a, on working with a with uh developing the story and being a sounding board and he's really helped me so much develop uh in a good way mm -hmm. as a content creator and that's what i'm having fun now uh that's and great, i there's a recent uh, i did an, uh, an interview for firestarter magazine are you familiar with that no so Firestarter is like a, a an, an art community uh, based magazine where it just talks about like art events, what's going on in the world mm -hmm. now. With you know like if you want to go to THU, if you want to go to IFCC, if you want to go to industry workshops, all that kind of stuff. You know this what their uh, um, promised land, all that stuff. Right. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. But I did an, an an interview with them, and I talked about how like I, I want to say like two years ago or about a year ago. Um, I wanted to quit the industry. Interesting. Because, because the the passion that I found in jumping into the industry was gone after working on so many things or not having your opinion. I don't want to say this the wrong way. Like I'm, I'm not saying that. Like I know what you're I saying. I wanted, I the wanted my opinion. I wanted my opinion to matter. I mean, it, like you could tell me, no, it's not a good idea for this reason and that, but at least you listened. Yeah. You know, instead of like, here's the brief, just do this, and then you, that's it. You know, that's uh, what it I didn't is most like of the that. Time, yeah, I didn't like and... that. Yeah, you you have to get used to it. It becomes a job, you know. The, the yeah. sort of, like the magic of it uh, disappears, and you know you get excited every now and then, depending on the project you're working on. Most of the yeah. time, you will be ex you will be excited about the project, you know, for the first couple of weeks, and then it will slowly depreciate. It fades. You know, it fades, yeah. um, and it just becomes a job, and that's normal. That's with everything, you know. The reality it, is, yeah. you know. In order to achieve something, you have to go through the grind, whether you like it or not. You know, it's yeah. the part of the 
part of, of being, you know, part of the job, part of the being in the industry. I agree with you what you said on... Um, <laughs> part on the of the part, ship, part of the crew. Yeah. When you, <laughs> when you said about, you know, when you once you work in the industry, you kind of know, okay, like it really takes a lot of effort to make things happen. And I agree with you. I've, I've spoken about does. this uh, myself many times, you know, when I saw, like seeing Ghost in the Shell being made, uh, seeing the, you know, behind the scenes, seeing how much it takes from the actors and the director, how long they work. Like people don't realize they wake up like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. That's when, when they start, goes all the way up to, to till 3 a.m. when they're actually shooting, you know? It's like yeah. really fucking long days. It's And it costs a lot of money. And it's a miracle that it's even being done, as you said. There's it's so a many huge undertaking. Can, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not easy. Yeah, when you're it's on the set easy. and look how many people are there and like what it what it really takes to actually make a good shot, you see just dollar dollar bills being burned by seconds, you know, like thousands oh, yeah. of dollars burned every second of the filming. It's crazy. You get a little newfound uh, appreciation when you get that experience. You know, it's really hard. It's it, you know, it's it sounds like all high and mighty, you know, saying how wonderful it is. Yeah. It does, but once you see it, you, you understand. You know, okay, like this is an actual production. You know, yeah, try, yeah. Do do experiment. Like if you think it's easy to make things, try to make a photo shoot. That was for me. <laughs> it was like, wow. yeah, make a photo shoot yeah. where you actually use like strobes, where you have a model, you have to organize things. Like just make make a photo shoot and see how mentally taxing that is just for you and two other people that you have to manage and yeah. make sure that none of the things that you're supposed to do are being fucked up. Like all of, all of it is being done properly. Now yeah. that times 200, because yeah. that's how many people can be on the set. You're going to lose yeah. your mind. Like just, yeah. It's, Which is it's, also it's, a testament why pre-production is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we could go on this forever. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> we could, we could. Maybe it's... we'll do a part two or something like that. Yeah, we should. Definitely should. Yeah. You, you know, you're more than welcome to come back. That'll be that'll be well, actually thanks, fun to do to do that again. Yeah, yeah it's anything. been pretty productive, man. It's a really good conversation. <laughs> we, I haven't been, you know, we haven't had time to catch up uh, too much. You know, if you if you know, if you know too many people, and you know this too, like if you know too many <laughs> people, it's just so hard to keep up with everyone. You know. It is. It is. I'm really Such trying. To, I'm trying to, to do guess. better about that. This, you know, <laughs> um, I just recently had um, uh, went out for uh, a, to grab a bite to eat with uh, Neil Huxley. He's a, such a great director uh, and a, and a oh, yeah. talented individual. And it was good just to catch up and talk shop and talk about the things we liked. And you know, that's uh, it's I it's love always his fun. Work. He's great because that's why we get into the industries because we all like the same shit on yeah. some form or another. <laughs> and we Perfect. all grow from each other so i you know it i love doing that and you know that's also one of the main reasons that we i created the studio to begin with so that's awesome man yeah yeah it's it's crazy the story you told me like how it actually went to fruition it's really interesting I, <laughs> and i never thought it would actually be that way so like i had my preconceptions that's why i was like really interested how you actually put it off and cuz it's not really easy to it's not really easy to start a company let alone it's hire not. people. <laughs> well, you know, and and you know, there's a little bit of of ego and hubris that you learn right away that you you have to you have to go well, you know. Yeah. It's scary. Do you want to do it? You know, like uh, there's a couple artist friends of mine that we're talking about doing studios, and I'm just like, yeah, I mean, you can, but you gotta, you know, like here's the lesson that I learned in the first year and a half. You know, in film, you have six clients. At the end of the day, you have six clients. Yeah. That's it. You know? And if you're trying to be hired constantly, you have to break that mold. You you can't be like, oh, I'm just a film concept artist. No, you should be a film and video game and TV and commercial and everything you can do. And if you have a secondary skill, like if you can matte paint or if you could sculpt for toys, like you know, do that. Because yeah. work is not constant. It's just not constant. No. And that's the hard lesson to learn, you know. Um, yeah. Not everybody can take all the work, you know what I mean? Uh, there's just, no, there's just simply, I don't want to scare people or be negative Nancy, 
but there's just not not enough work going around as it is, which is ironic because we're consuming media at an alarming rate. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like with, like, I, I almost would say like, if, if I could pay Netflix 20 more dollars, like if everybody could pay 20 more dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I know that's expensive, but say, say Netflix was 30 or $40 a month. But they made even more original content. I'm for it. Yeah, a lot of people would be for it for sure. I would but totally, I would totally it, line me up, take my money. I a would lot of totally people be that happy. care about it. Uh, let's put it this way. Yeah. Or, or even if it was just funding, or you know, maybe, maybe it allowed for you know less downtime. You know, like maybe, it, maybe give Game of Thrones more money so they can finish their season and not have it take ten years to make. You know what I mean? <laughs> stuff, stuff like that, or. You know, or or you know, leave it up to uh, social media. That what's that one company? Have you heard of that? They made. Um, oh man, I'm blanking on the name. Colossal. Have you seen that movie? No. Uh, Colossal is it's about like uh, it's got Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis in it. It's pretty. Co- it's very cool. I thought it was a comedy. It's so not a comedy. <laughs> um, it's it's kind of a dark dark movie but it's very interesting i i think you'd like it but it was crowdsourced from um legion m and uh i've heard nothing but really good things about that and and essentially it's like everybody crowdsources their money and funds part of the film but when they do that and like not only do they get to see the movie for free and they get to vote on movies that they want to watch with actors that they want in these roles um you That's get really to share from concept. you get to share from the proceeds as well. Really so if cool. it does really really well, you make your money back, you know, tenfold, which is great. That's awesome. Let's do that. I'm down for that. Yeah, that's that's, that's such a, a great better. idea. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's like a and Kickstarter it, almost. Yeah, it's like the the moment Legion, in my opinion, the the moment Legion M gets something, uh, in terms of a small group of people, uh that can be like a small art department or content creators that they could be the next Paramount or the next Disney in, in 10, 15 years. I mean, look, you at, never know. Look at Netflix, you know, like when Netflix, yeah, came Netflix out, is great. When Netflix came out, blockbuster, uh, was laughing. Where's blockbuster now? When yeah. Netflix said, we're going into a movie industry, everyone was laughing. Now Netflix <laughs> is the seventh big studio. You know what I mean? I, you know, honestly, I think so. Like, you know, I haven't really told anybody this, um, but I've in my IP. I, you know, when you're when you're developing something, I feel like the the idea of well, visually, I need big budget money to make this work. If it's like a you know a visually impressive film or something like mm-hmm. that, but for longevity and in terms of telling a good story, episodic is where it's at. Yeah. You know? So, like... It just depends what kind of story you want to tell. Like, if it's a small novel, which can be wrapped in a couple of hours, or, like, in two hours, then it's better to make a movie. But if you want to really develop the characters... But if you can binge it, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, binging is also a a platform that they're, they're, they're building on that. You know, Netflix was like, why would we release, you know, Luke Cage one week at a time when we could just slam all of it and let the fans watch it at their leisure or, or binge it? You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. It's still content, um, and that's really really cool in that in in that regard. But like, I think in the early ninety early two thousands, I don't want to say early nineties. I think it's early two thousands. Uh, the BBC network did was doing Doctor Who, and they were doing shows. I can't remember. It was like a spin off show of something, and. They would set it up like this where, like, the first season and the second season would be very episodic. Mm -hmm. But then the next season was less episodes but bigger budgets. So it was like like redoing the miniseries, right? Right. So, like, I feel like if you wanted to do a really cool sci-fi or fantasy epic on Netflix today – you could go episodic 
or you could go you, you know you could do like you know a four or six hour special right mm-hmm. and save everything don't destroy the props don't destroy you know the set be clever with how you build the stuff so that you can reuse it for the episodic part and then do episodics for like two seasons and then you know uh have the opportunity to do, do the big movie that you know you would have normally you would normally have like say 110 million to do a season now you have 110 million to do a, a three-hour movie you know what I mean? Like that yeah. would be rad. Like I think there's something cool in that. That would I don't even know what you would call it. Like epic, like epic f- storytelling, or I I don't even know. Yeah, it's hard. You would call that, you know. Um, but you know, social social media will find a hashtag for that, and, <laughs> and it'll be, it'll be fine. But you know, like that kind of content, like I really hope they do that for like you know when Disney has their the Star Wars live action episodic. Like that would be rad. Mm-hmm. I would, I would love to watch the te- like the the Netflix version of that show or that streaming show, and then every once in a while they have a movie in theaters with those characters. Cool, sign me up. I'd do it. Yeah, it's proven. Serenity did it. Firefly did it. Yeah. Why not? There's why many not opportunities the other ways? out there. Yeah. yeah. Just thinking differently is like I think so important in in terms of trying stuff out and and content creation these days that um, yeah look Netflix at the social media you know because even, they they can take risks they're not set in their ways yeah exactly and even just like from a more grounded perspective you as an artist yeah. like you don't really have to be in film and and you don't have to work for anyone and still make a living you know look at the it's still going to take you a lot of work and a lot of time to get there, but you can build your own brand, build a brand about yourself, about the, the art you do, and find the following. You know, If, if you're yeah. really good at it and you're consistent and you're really working really hard to make it happen and you have that special sauce, personality. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Then you can make personality it Personality is key. Personality yeah. is key. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's... Let's, uh, let's, let's get some, some, some of these some, questions. Yeah, yeah, some of these questions and... We'll wrap it up from here. Let me see what do we have here. Pretty sure there was quite a few. Try oh. to find it on the chat. Doo-doo-doo. Looking over. I'll just go maybe like I'll just pick randomly two or three. Sure, it's whatever you want to do. Um, when you have an idea nowadays, do you jump straight into the sculpting process right away, or do you brainstorm sketch? Uh, out some of uh, those ideas first it it all depends on the time i have allotted if i'm working two jobs i may just jump right into sculpting and then you know uh, some sometimes i try to not even tell the client that i'm using 3d software because that scares them Right. You know what I mean? Like for time. So what they don't understand is that like I can speed sketch it and paint and draw on top of it and, and get you six or seven designs by the end of day to choose from as opposed to like hand doing three. You know what I mean? Like uh, if I have time, I like to spend at least one day gathering reference and doing thumbnails. Yeah. Um, How do I you really approach do. this? Like when you work with clients – do you just assume you're going to send something at the end of the day or do you give yourself more time and let's say like I'm going to send you something in two days from now? How do you do, how do you approach that? It, it all depends on, on the client. You know, like I we're in the office now, we're trying to make sure that all the meetings happen on Monday mm-hmm. and that we have a check in on Wednesday and then a final due on a Friday or something like that. Right. Because I feel like constant not only is constant communication is good but when you're overdoing it you're taking away from the development time of the idea um and it's important to catch a bad idea early on but i feel like that's the job of the art director Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the or the creative director like my job is to check in with my artists make sure that they're doing something right you know like you know uh, just making sure they're not they're listening to the client notes you know, um, yeah. and then just moving on. So a lot of my day these days is like, you know, it's like, it's like four or five hours of management and then I got to put in, you know, another seven hours of sculpting or something. Right. Um, or try to, 
you know, or or work on spend the rest of that time working on an IP or working on a product that we might try and put out, you know, like that's what I do these days. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard. Sometimes, you know, you just get those clients that want to check in all the time, you know, it's really horrible. Yeah. I try to talk, you know, and I think that that's an industry thing where I feel like all of us need to come together and understand that like blue sky is so important. So stop trying to cut that from bids. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just. I agree the look you. of a film is so important and shouldn't be taken lightly uh, that I feel that there's 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 a generation of directors that don't appreciate that and understand that. You know, like like Cameron, he comes from an art department. He knows how important that shit is, which is why he's you know he's doing three movies at once. He's yeah. solving he's solving all the problems. He's making sure the continuity works before he starts putting people on sets. You know, it's I think that's smart as hell. Um, I think that, that the Star Wars films would be amazing if they just took three years off and developed developed the arc. You know. Yeah. Don't don't go from film to film. That seems silly, but that, you know, I I keep relating everything to Star Wars because I'm a nerd and I love Star Wars, so that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, it, but that's just what that's how I feel. You know, um, I feel so strongly because these things because they're in my DNA. They're what I grew up on. They're what I uh, strive to do and strive to be. So it's very, very um, – sometimes it's hard to be a fan, but sometimes it's really good to be a fan. Like yeah. being, being – yeah, like being a fan of comic book movies, you know. If you read comics when you were a kid, it's this is the best time to be alive. Yeah, you have all of them in, in the yeah. cinema right now. <laughs> yeah, you I really mean – yeah, and even 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 being a Star Wars fan, if you were to tell me in '94 that we would have a Star Wars movie every year, uh, I don't know what I would do. But now people complain about it, you know, and it's just like, well, yeah, if you rush things, you you get rushed product, or you know, um, not saying that these things weren't rushed and or that the time wasn't spent on them, but I'm just saying that like. When you try to push that too much, I feel like that was a bad move. But at the end of the day, I still bought them. I still went and saw mm-hmm. them in the movie theater. I'm still having a good time rewatching them, you know. Yeah. Um. You know, I think we've 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 almost become a, a culture where we we like to bitch. Yeah. Because it validates our experience or something. But um, that's another discussion and getting off topic. What's the, what's the next question? <laughs> Yeah, we could go forever in this, huh? We could go forever, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, I'll I, close uh, it with the saying that I've heard from, uh, I've said it before, I've heard it from the uh, Tim, uh, gosh, fuck. Okay, never mind. I, f- I really forgot, I, I'm really, I'm either tired or I forget names. Even the, the easy ones. Who wrote the 4-Hour Workweek? Jesus. Oh, uh, hang on. Where's it's on my book? <laughs> I'm so fucking. Stupid. Hang on, it's on my bookshelf. I'm too tired. Tim, uh, damn it. Oh man. It's embarrassing. I I can't remember his. No, name. no, 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 no. Because no. I have that book and I and I've read Tim half Ferris. of it. I, Tim Ferriss. That's yeah. what it is. It's embarrassing because I read his book so many times and I talked about <laughs> him so many times. It's really, yeah. it's really embarrassing. What I was, yeah. what I was, uh, trying to say is. He had an um, interview with some guy. I can't remember the name of that guy because, you know, he's interviewing so many people. Yeah. Um, but that person said their quote that stuck with me. And I remember it till now. You know, it's, it's a pretty simple one. There's no there's no statues erected for critics. Erected for critics. Yeah. 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 That's one hell of a saying. Yeah. So words words I, be- I believe Go George stuff. Lucas loved to say that a lot actually. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, yeah. w- words are cheap. Just go make stuff, you know? And if you really don't like anything, if you really don't like something, act on it. Don't yeah. bitch about it. That's not going to change anything. It, li- well, it really you know, yeah, a lot, so. A lot of people bitch about, you know, the first uh, episodes 1 through 3 and like I have problems with it, but I still own them and I still watch them. And you know what? 
uh, Lucas scared, did something, and I, and I, I stood on, uh, you know, on my couch, and did nothing for those years. You know, I, you know, it's get off your ass and do something, and then your opinion matters. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one was um, how important is having mentor uh, in the art journey, and if you are to pick mm. up, a, pick up art seriously, how and what would you do? It's a really loaded question. Uh, do I think mentors are important? Absolutely. Um, I think that depending upon how you learn, that might be the best way. Right. If you can, you know, if, 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 a, if a artist that you like is doing a mentorship, um, then by all means, definitely do that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that a mentorship would replace the fundamentals any day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Sorry. Like, do you need to learn fundamentals of perspective from John Park? No. Any teacher can tell you what, you know, uh, you know, uh, three point perspective or two point, the difference between those two and why it matters and why you need to do that. You know what I mean? Not saying that yeah. John can teach that very well. I'm sure he can. But like, use your money wisely. Could you go to a community college and learn that? Yeah. You know, if you want to get specialized, then you take the course with 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 John Park or with you or with Ash or with Bobby Chu or whomever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. whatever you want to do, then that's what you should do. Um, and that's that's like the be- This is the best time to get into art because the access of information and you can just reach out. Hell, you could just reach out on Twitter and say, "Hey, you know, do you have a mentorship?" If they answer, they answer. If they don't, they don't. You know, don't take it personal. But you know, yeah. That's just that's just how it is, uh, and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a really interesting uh, time for for art and sharing and learning. Um, yeah, yeah, it really is. It's so easy to get in touch with really good artists these days. You know, not every yeah. da- not every single one of them will answer, and it's yeah. not because they hate you. Maybe some do. Most of them don't. Most of <laughs> most of the people that you consider like being those amazing. You know, personas like, oh, my God, this guy is such a good guy. He's, he's an art god and whatnot. Uh, most of them are just like you, you know, and me. It's just like yeah. regular people. It's just they're busy with their lives, you know. Just yeah, consider like, raising kids or having a family. Yeah. or we're not Just because it says we're online doesn't mean we're online. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you might be online, even if you're online, just to fart and just go through the through the feed. You know, yeah, that's, that's your own prerogative of what do you want to do. It doesn't, yeah. It, we imagine, it, yeah, imagine going to a store and then every single person on the way is asking you a question. Like you would freak out after a couple of days. It'd take you four <laughs> hours to get something done. So yeah, I mean, imagine that if you're hitting up your your favorite artist or your favorite person or whatever like that on, online that you're trying to learn from. Understand that that sometimes that can be exhausting. Um, not to say that we don't want to hear, you know, from you all the all the time, but that that's also a sense of, you know, like if you've reached out to someone online, understand that they have another a life and that they have another, you know, uh, they have other things going on. Um, they don't owe you anything, but it would be nice for them to get back to you and to share these things. Yeah. But if they're if you're not getting a reply, then there's a good reason. Because most of us aren't assholes, you know what yeah. I mean. Like, there's a good reason we're not getting back to you, and just just don't take it personally. That's the only thing I could say is like, don't take it personal. Um, don't abuse it either, because if you abuse it, then we're definitely going to remember you in a bad way, and you don't <laughs> want to do that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You just don't want to do that. I have this, like I said, I have this fucking yeah. guy who's who first he was like t- every tweet he he was making, he would just tag me on it. And now he's just spamming my email. I just obviously uh, delete all of that. Don't do that either, by the way. Don't do that either. I mean, it's nice. Um, so in, in my opinion, especially when it comes to social media, um, and this will touch on other, you know, some of the things, you know, we mentioned before we started the call. It's like, do you want to just talk about stuff that pisses you off in the industry? Um, we could. But uh, just, just real quickly, um, Instagram is kind of like the new kind of Facebook in a, in the sense. Mm-hmm. If you run a page where you're just sharing art, but you're not giving the username of, say, said 
artist, you're really you're kind of making your page popular and not giving credit where credit is due. It's it's not a big deal, but it definitely helps anyone that's doing this for a living. Um, and I just I, I wish more people would understand that. It's not a negative thing, and I'm not trying to attack anybody personally, but it, like I see it happening all the time where you know even famous celebrities will like will share an image from like one of you guys and like but not say who it who it's by, and it's like, well you know if you have if you have say two million followers on on a Facebook page or even a hundred thousand or something like that, and you and you share an image by your favorite artist and don't give their you know. Uh, their username or their you know way to find them you're kind of doing a disservice you're kind of getting f- you know famous for the wrong reasons or something i don't, I don't know right um i or agree it, it also give like the if, artist a credit like that yeah just get, it it takes no time it takes no time yeah uh and it's kind of insulting that if you don't take it that is. one second to go at mache you know what i mean like why wouldn't you um and on the same note you know like there's a lot of a lot of schools that are teaching, like, you know, just to kind of find art and then make a copy of it in 3D and then, you know, post it. And you're like, well, that's not, you know, <laughs> you're going to piss off people. Yeah, I don't if you care do about that. that kind of stuff, though. Like, in all honesty, those kind of people that can only copy will not get far either. Like, if, yeah. you, if you don't learn how to be an artist by yourself, like, you might get lucky once or twice, but the likes going to end and you you will not have a job you know you know how it is yeah. in this industry like you get an um you get a job and then you get asked to do millions of changes and if you cannot do that because you, you do don't it. have yep. that creativity then you will be fired it's as simple uh, as that that's so. that's the fan art problem and i think that my so my opinion on fan art is i absolutely love it um i i i want to see more of it but if you're doing nothing but fan art and calling yourself a concept artist, you're not. Yeah. You're not. I need to see iterations. I need to see ideas. I need to see what worked and what didn't. I need to see, you know, um, if it's the characters in a pose, I need to see, you know, what the front of the shoe looks like, the back of the shoe looks like, because this is going to be handed off to a fabricator or a modeler. That's concept design. It, yeah. It, and it's not trying to be elitist or anything like that because you're just an it's you're you're an illustrator and people need that you know people need that you're just a, it's it's a marketing job and marketing pays better than concept art I can tell you that much um, you know I see a lot of fan art done in terms of like major properties and people can use that to get jobs and that's absolutely great I'm not trying to knock anybody for doing that. But if you think that you're, you, you're going to be really good at doing fan art and become a concept artist off of it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah. No, yeah. That's a, that's a cold, hard truth, and I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. I just see, you know, you'll see it on ArtStation. Well, it'll be like somebody will say, like, they got, like, 19 titles where they're like, I'm a 3D artist, I'm a 2D artist, I'm a storyboard, I'm an illustrator, I'm a, you know. When I see that and I see that you've worked in the industry for two years, that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, jack of all trades, uh, master yeah. of none. Yeah, you can be a you can be a jack of all trades when you've got twenty five years in the industry. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I guess you, you know the industry bec- becomes really more generalist as the as the different tools converge and become easier and easier. But there's no, yeah yeah there's no reason to call yourself like twenty titles. You know, you could just call yourself artist. Yeah. You know, at the end or, of the or day, or creative. I'm a creative. Yeah, whatever. At the end of the day, yeah. you're not getting hired by a title. You're getting hired, I guess, like depending on the industry. But in the industry yeah. we are in, people hire you for your work, and that's it. Like that's really it. There's no yeah. secret sauce. If your work is good, you're gonna get hired. You don't have to be a known person. If your work is really good, nope. you're gonna get hired. You just have to go through the filter of, you know, quality, basically. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. just just for me, in in in, in all uh, you know, honesty and clarity, you know, like I I run my business, but I only get put on films maybe twice, three times a year. Yeah, that's just that's just the reality. Um, I'm I'm busy doing other things, but I did that because 
that's just how the industry is. Some people are, you know, um, I don't want to say lucky because that diminishes what they've done. They, they're very, very hardworking and they get the opportunity to work on many films a year. Um, and that's awesome. And I think everybody's striving to do that. But I just want everybody to know that, like, that's not the norm. You no. got to be a superhero. You got to be awesome. You got to have drive. You got to have, you know, a skill set that not many have. Because if, if you didn't, you wouldn't be doing it. You yeah. know, like I mean, like how many, like how many movies you work on uh, in a year? You work on a lot, right? I don't. It's not that many, you know. Just consider. Well, I mean, I'm not saying like double digits or anything like that, but no, like it's more than five, few. right? No, I don't think so. Five so, is about uh, the normal. I, I, yeah, it I, depends. I don't know. Like you know, depends on how long the projects are. You know, like I, I've started this year. Um, I worked on uh, one project with the. Uh, I I worked on that VR project. That was not a movie, but it was with the movie folks. Um, mm. uh, it was for the that, that VR comp the VR company, the Jurassic oh, Park okay. thing. Yeah. Um, then after that, I was working with a uh, production designer that I know really well. And then right after that, uh, I've been working on Marvel project for a while now. I, I did some Nike. Jealous. Don't yeah, you talk the Nike thing is really cool. I'm really excited <laughs> about that one. But I'm working with the Marvel. Uh, I'm working with Blur. Yeah, Blur's couple, another great company. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of jobs. Um, I'm trying to keep myself busy, but again, like I don't want to jump. I used to do like a couple of things all at once. Not that, not anymore. And normally, you know, the film will take you at least a couple of months. So yeah. if you count it together and, you know, you have some different projects in between, sometimes you take you take your time off as well. You end up with, you know, maybe three or four films that you work on on a given year. That, but that's that's granted that when you, if you work like for a couple of months in the project and some of the projects, you know, that this pretty well can only be yeah. a few weeks, you know. So, yep, it just depends. Um, yeah. I try to keep myself busy. This 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 year is much more busy than the last year for sure. Yeah. Last year I tried to try to take uh try did try to take it real easy, easier and I also have noticed that, you know, I guess if you're not active enough, you know, you're not yeah. getting as many offers either. So that's always It's it's a fine line. You you gotta you gotta know when to use the social media and know how to use it in order to yeah. keep relevant. But yeah. What uh, what's the next question? We keep going off on tangents. We're gonna have to do a part two. We're no, gonna have yeah, to do a part let's two. Let's do part two. Let's let's wrap it up here actually. Okay. Um I'm I'm pretty sure there's more questions there, but we'll do, do you want me to do like a quick a quick speed round of, of answering nah, short I'll, I'll answer short. Okay. Let's wrap it up. I, okay. I got I got a work to do. It's wow. Like, <laughs> okay. We've been we've been talking for how many how, how much time? How long is it? Most oh my hours. god, two hours. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, time what is happened? Flying, huh? Yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. We'll try. I'll try and take the time to answer the chat. Um, but I'm sure that Mache is very busy, and I'm getting ready for Comic Con, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah, let's wrap um, up here. I will. I I promise to come back, and Mache, feel free to harass me to answer these comments in the chat <laughs> uh, at a later time. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry. Awesome. I, you know, guys, you you you've been through the. If you if you joined this for the first time, you know, we just have a limited time you're here many times around you know that a lot of questions you guys are asking there are answers for this in previous episodes by the way <laughs> i just don't <laughs> have i don't i don't have time to go through them and put out the clips you know like clip the yeah. clip the uh the episodes because there's so many i could literally do a full-pledged qa based on the 80 something episodes i've done so far and yeah. answer any of, of the questions you have so <laughs> But I'm trying. I'm really trying to get most of them answered, uh, if it, if time permits. So, anyways, let's wrap it up here, man. It was good. All right, sounds good. Let's do let's do round round two sometime soon. Sounds awesome. Thanks, guys. Cool. Uh, and yeah, thanks guys for joining. Um, thanks for tuning in. As always, you know, doing it for you guys. If you wanna if you wanna support the show, subscribe. We also have affiliate um, program with action vfx i've talked about it when i was on the show with the uh jonathan berubi it's freaking awesome vfx footage you know stock footage stuff it's pretty fucking good 
I use it that myself. guy's a beast. That guy's a beast. Yeah, Jonathan I haven't I haven't met Jonathan yet, but I, I I've always wanted to. I, I love his work. Amazing stuff. Yeah, he's great. Uh, he used to do a VFX. I you know that's where, that's why I like I shown that I've shown him the 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 action VFX. It's actionvfx.com, mm-hmm. and he's like, man, that's really freaking good, you know. And I use it myself. <laughs> cool. You can get ten percent off if you if you purchase anything. Uh, if you type in in the discount code Art Cafe. Oh, that's get, cool. I'm looking at it now. This off. is great. Yeah, it's really good, man. It's it's really good quality. This so. whole thing was just so you could sell me this, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Exactly. I'm just kidding. Exactly. You're like, this guy's got a studio. He needs to buy this crap. No, I'm just kidding. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. I All this stuff, my... any, any asset that speeds up your day is worth yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. The way I yeah. look at it is like, I like to pay money to buy stuff to not work on it because <laughs> it saves time. <laughs> yeah. I, I really do. Like if I can yes. buy a if I can buy an asset from Turbo Squid that's gonna save me a day of work, I'll do it gladly. I'll pay that fifty bucks because yep. my time yep. is m- much more worth than the fifty dollars. Yeah, uh, like a full day, you know. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. Yeah, I'm doing just my due diligence. You know, I have to start doing that. Uh, whether you guys support the show or not, I, I'm still gonna continue. It's free. <laughs> but any support it just makes makes me free up more time to actually do it you know so yeah anyways let's wrap it up here thanks guys for tuning in and um we have andrew price uh later this week the the blender guru himself and uh yeah and then some more guests coming up the the pipe so tune in for the next time and uh, yeah peace have a good day good night wherever you are later